nerds, what's up? Today I'm gonna talk about my favorite fantasy books that I read in 2022. If you've been here before, you know that I hate ordering them in relation to each other, so this is like my pile of favorite books that I read this year. Let's get into it and you can let me know which ones were your favorite books of the year and if you've read any of these and like them. Let's first talk about American Gods by Neil Gaiman. This was, I think, the second book I read this year and I just really loved it. I've been trying to slowly work my way through Gaiman. After not loving the first book I read by him, which was Neverwhere, I took a few year break and then started reading other books by him and realizing how much I actually love Gaiman and maybe that's just not the best book to start with. And American Gods just really blended his kind of wacky narrative structure and very out there concepts in a way that I really enjoyed, particularly the way that he represents gods as being formed by the ideas of people, meaning that the same god could form differently on different continents. I really liked it. It's kind of a strange book. I like strange books. I really liked the narrative structure. This one's definitely my top books of the year. Next up is a third in the trilogy, which is Jade Legacy by Fonda Lee. I absolutely loved the Greenbone saga. You guys have heard me talk about it already this year. And the final book in the trilogy was just no exception. It was the best of the three in my opinion. It did so much and it really gave such a good conclusion to all of our characters. And one thing that I really love about the Greenbone Saga is that it is a trilogy that spans many, many years. And so being with characters for years, right, in a book really helps you get to know them. And I felt that Lee did such a good job of making the character arc so realistic, understanding how a 20 year old is gonna be different than a 40 year old and how that might look. And it was probably one of my favorite parts of the novel. Also obviously loved the magic and the world building. If you haven't checked out the Greenbone Saga, I know people are hyping it, but I'm telling you it's worth the hype. This is good from start to finish. Next up, we got a classic author, which is Terry Pratchett with Reaper Man. I was trying to read a lot of Terry Pratchett this year. I failed a little bit. I think I only read three Discworlds. I love every Discworld, but Reaper Man was on another level for me. The death storyline was so hilarious. I so funny and it's funny because when i read my review my five star review of this on instagram people were like yeah the death storyline's amazing but the wizard one with the mall was kind of weird i actually loved it i know that might be a little bit unpopular but that was such a bizarre storyline with the mall and the shopping carts i thought it was wacky in the perfect way i will say i think i tend to be more nostalgic for the wizard storylines. I feel like people really don't like the rinse swin storylines as much as I do. I loved Color of Magic. I loved The Light Fantastic. So I like when we focus on the wizards. I love that part. I will say, obviously the death parts were probably stronger. Very, very funny. Discworld just never misses, but this one is probably catapulted to be up near Guards Guards and Weird Sisters for me as just like peak Pratchett. Next up is a fourth installment in the series, I'm sorry, but it is Speaking Bones by Ken Liu. This is the final book in the Dandelion Dynasty, a series that I have tried to talk about a lot because I think it is so underrated, it is so amazing. And the final book was just so magnificent in tying together every theme that Liu has been trying to do in the whole series. And making a very unexpected but very satisfying ending to those themes. I've been lucky enough to interview him. I highly recommend you watching those. Some of those interviews are non-spoiler, so you can watch them. And he talks a lot about modernity and legacy and the way that that came together in this book was very impactful for me. And I will say that there are quotes and ideas in this book that I actually legitimately think will stay with me forever. Some of them being like, the universe is knowable, do the most interesting thing. I highly recommend you starting the series. It is long, you can tell. It is long, it covers multiple generations, it follows many different characters, and he makes engineering the hero and the magic in the novel. And overall, it's just, if you like the big epic fantasies, right? If you're, you know, the Game of Thrones, Wheel of Time, where you want all the little details to come together and work, this is the book for you. I will warn you, this book gives you the sads for like 950 pages of the 1,050 pages, but it's worth it. Next up is The Heroes by Joe Abercrombie. Now this might be a mixed bag opinion because I think Heroes either works for you as an Abercrombie fan or it doesn't, but The Heroes so far is my favorite book I have read of the First Law series. I have read the entire First Law except the Age of Magic Madness trilogy which I know everyone loves, so I'm sure I will love it too. But so far, having read the original trilogy, all the standalones, and the short story collection, 
The Heroes is my absolute favorite. What's interesting to me about The Heroes is I obviously already liked the first law because I wouldn't have kept reading it if I didn't. But something about reading The Heroes retroactively changed how I felt about the rest of the first law series for the better. Like all of a sudden something about the characters and the themes in The Heroes made me understand the rest of the series better. Yes, it's depressing like all of Abercrombie's, but it has the wit, it has the themes in a way that meant a lot to me. The Heroes, if you don't know, it's about war. It's a three-day battle. This whole book is a three-day battle and it's so funny because I was so worried to read this book because I hate battle, but it's not really. It's about what battle is probably really like, which is like all the mundane moments and the in-betweens and the motivations. And I just think it's probably some of Abercrombie's best character work. So definitely The Heroes, top of my list. The next two are two books I read for my goal this year of reading all the 2010 Hugo Awards. If you wanna watch that video, you can. And it's kind of cool that two of them ended up on my favorites list of the year. So I guess it was worth it for the ones I didn't like. But anyway, this is Red Shirts by John Scalzi. I love this book. This is definitely the light, most lighthearted book on my list, the funniest book on my list. It was such a great nostalgia boost for somebody who grew up watching the next generation Star Trek with my dad. The whole, so I already knew what a red shirt was, you know? And this is like such a perfect example of a concept book done right. It has just the right thread of seriousness, but also so much satire and so much humor. I actually laughed out loud several times at this book. It just hit so perfectly for me. I, I am curious if you need to have any Star Trek knowledge to find it as funny as I did, but if you like a, need like a lighter hearted book, I highly recommend this. I read it super quickly and I think it deserves the Hugo Award. It was great. Now this next one I've talked about a lot because I'm obsessed with it now. And that is The Three Body Problem by Shishen Liu. This was the first book in translation to win a Hugo Award. I ended up reading the entire trilogy this year. My unpopular opinion is I do think the first one is still my favorite, even though I rated this one a five, the second a 4.5 and the last Last book of five. The whole trilogy is incredible. This trilogy, I actually think fundamentally changed how I feel about the universe at large. And it's so cool to me that a science fiction book could do that. I feel like I think differently. It kind of expanded my idea of, you know, what it means for us to interact with science and the world at large. And what's interesting, it's not like necessarily I agree with Liu's vision of the future, but it's just a vision of the future that presents so much thinking, if that makes sense. Like I wanted to contemplate about what it could mean. And I always like a series that does that. My warning every time I talk about this series is that this is a series full of ideas, not character development. So if you're a person who needs like deep characters, this book probably won't be for you. But if you really like like science and thoughts and processing ideas, I highly recommend this series. And last but not least, The Parable of the Sower by Octavia Butler. Now I've been wanting to read Octavia Butler for a long time because obviously she's an extremely famous name in the sci-fi sphere. She's a legend and I just like kept not getting around her and I was having kind of a reading slump and this was available at my library. I ended up buying it after because I loved it so much. So I thought, you know what? I'm just sure, why not? It gripped me and never let go. I've read now Kindred as well and I plan to read all of Octavia Butler's works. Like that's how good this and Kindred was that I'm like, I have to read everything that they've ever written. But this book reminds me of Pratchett in a single way, not their writing styles at all. But it's like, she wrote this 20 or 30 years ago and it feels like it could have been written this year. And I'm always so impressed when an author is big brained enough to be able to write things decades before they could still become relevant. Like everything in this book is still relevant. And it was a dark book. It was at times very, very hard for me to get through because it's like so heavy but the themes and the things she talked about in this book just hit so close to home. And I feel like her writing is so good. And one thing I really, really admire about at least the two books I've read from her is that she does not tell the reader what to think. So much in modern sci-fi, I feel like people are afraid, authors are afraid that the reader won't get what they want them to get. And with Butler, she is not afraid of that. She presents all these ideas that actually made me sit like, what is she trying to say? What is her point? What should I get out of this? And an author that can make me sit and reflect and try to think about our world, again, is something I'm always just gonna strongly identify with. If you have not read Butler, this is me telling you, just pick it up, read Butler. So those were my top, I think eight, yeah, eight books of the year. I try to keep my top books of the year to be under 10% of what I've read for the year. I feel like that's fair. So eight books is definitely at that max for me, but those books were all just so amazing. I had to include this on this list. 
Let me know if you've read those books, if they were as amazing for you or if they didn't hit. Let me know what your favorite book of the year that you read was. And as always, if you like these kind of videos, please like and subscribe. That is the best way to support me. And if you want to see what I'm currently reading, as well as other nerdy rants, you can check me out on Instagram at bookborn.reviews. I'll see you next time. Bye.